All right. The four most obnoxious fan bases in the NFL all got eliminated this past weekend. Three of them, the Eagles, the Steelers, and the Cowboys, in the same day. Who's the fourth? I think we all know that's the New England Patriots. <laughs> you got damn right it is. And then boys, this is the 26th straight year. Uh, they didn't make it to the NFC Championship. Actually, Nick Foles has more playoff wins than the Cowboys have in the last 25 years. Nick Foles four, Cowboys three. Kyler Murray pulls off a, Car- a great Carson Wentz impersonation on his way to uh, losing again. And I think uh, the Cardinals are right up there for one of the longest streaks without a championship title. We'll have to pull that up here in a second, talk a little bit more about that. And at the end of the weekend, then there were eight. All this and more coming up next on the Horseman Pro Football Talk Podcast. All right, here we go. Another edition of the Horseman Pro Football Talk Podcast. This is the 2021-2022 playoff edition. Uh, I'm Brad. This is Zach. And I'm Hefe. Uh, Okay, you got to join our Patreon community. We got big stuff coming up for Season 3 of the Horseman Pro Football Talk Podcast. Go to horsemansports.com right now and sign up and join us uh, and get ready for the upcoming season. I mean – I'm talking about next season before this season's over because I'm a fan talking to you, a real fan, and uh, we just love football that much. So already looking forward to next season. But let's start off with the pig, pigskin, weekly pigskin pick em leaders for the playoff division. I know one of the people who won. Actually, I know the person who won, Who? but there was a tie, right? Yeah, it was a tie at the top. Two of us went ten and five. It was uh, me and somebody else, I believe. And and rumor has it, yeah. Well, who's the other person, Zach? Do you know? I look that would be ago. Trey. It was Trey. Yep. All right. So uh, and and so there was a tie, and and uh, you won the tiebreaker. Is that the rumor I heard? That's right. Yeah, the tiebreaker for for Wild Card Weekend was how many total points would be scored throughout the weekend, and you know my thinking was with the teams that were left, if you just average it out to fifty points a game uh, for six games, that's three hundred points, and there ended up being three hundred and three scored. Uh, oh, nice. Well, how many did the trade pick? Does anybody know? Uh, I think it was two twenty. Okay. All right. So he, he was a little ways off. Okay. Well, it, you know, that comes down to that whole thing, and we'll have to get Trey's input. Does Would you rather just get blown out by 83, or would you <laughs> would Trey rather have picked 304, uh, you know, and got, got uh, squeezed out on the bid on Price is Right by a dollar kind of thing? Um, anyway, congratulations to both of you. I, on the other hand, forgot to pick for the first game the couple, and answer the couple questions for the first game. And then uh, on the question that said, Will uh, Jones? I'm not not Jones. Gosh, my God, Josh Allen. I don't know why I said Jones. Would Josh Allen throw for 250 yards and rush for 50 yards? And I said no. And uh, I think like in the first drive, he had like 46 yards rushing or something, just <laughs> ridiculous. So uh, I I got 60 points. I'm way down at the bottom. I I don't know. I won't ask Zach. Uh, that's how I felt the entire season, being down all year. It's like, oh man, I can't come back from this. But I was happy. To, I was happy to miss the the Cowboys pick. I gotta, I gotta say that. What what a disaster! Uh, the whole organization. I the I I, I am disappointed. Um, well, I, let's not start with disappointed. First of all, penalties. You've heard me say it over and over and over and over and over again. You can sometimes win in this league with very little talent if you have good discipline, but you can never win without discipline. And I'm so disappointed in the fans. I'm disappointed in Dak. I'm disappointed in in Skip Bayless. I, I, I'm this referee. This is a bunch of bullshit. First of all, the the, re, the empire has to touch the ball. Everybody knows that. I, Somebody should have walked, ran over, and handed the ball to the umpire, which should have been Dak, right? Dak's got the ball, right? 
That's first and foremost. Then, then we got to go to you, you ran up the middle. They gave you the middle for a reason. That's football 101. Everybody knows that, maybe 102, but everybody knows that's a basic class. They gave you the middle because they, they figured you couldn't get a playoff. So uh, there's that whole thing in on top of it. But you had 100 yards, over 100 yards and penalties for the whole game, and you don't think that had anything to do with you losing? Bullshit. So this begs the question. Despite the success they had during the regular season, we know that's talent. Does Jerry Jones take a look at Mike McCarthy and think about replacing him? I think, I think there has to be serious consideration. Will it actually happen? Um, it sounds like probably not. Um, we know how long Jerry Jones kept a hold of – can't even remember his name now. Jason uh, Garrett. Jason Garrett, yeah. yeah. Kept a hold of Jason Garrett forever when they were just mediocre – for a lot of years um, and disappointing for a lot of years when they had talented teams. And, you know, we talk about, you know, this game, they had 14 penalties, the Cowboys did. But if you look back across the entire season, they got penalties all year. Penalties cost them a couple of big games through the season. And so uh, it, it's a pattern, right? It's a pattern. You look back at the the Packers, Mike McCarthy, they Mike McCarthy days. It was some of the same stuff that held those Aaron Rodgers teams back. Some mental mistakes by the team, and and when that's a pattern like that, that has to drop on the coach, um, and and also with his hand in the offensive play calling, um, he also has to be faulted for the decision to do what they did at the end of the game. So um, I think there should be serious consideration. Do I think it'll happen? No, but he should be somebody that uh, gets replaced this offseason, in my opinion. Uh, see, I kind of disagree. I know, I mean, you have a lot of issues to work out, to work with, uh, but this was only his second season with the Cowboys. They more they doubled their win total from the previous season. I know there was an extra game in there, but they went 12-5 and five in the regular season. The year before that, they were 6-10. and 10. Uh, This has been the best Cowboys season since 2016 when they went 13 and three uh, in which they lost to the Packers in the divisional playoffs that year. Uh, so you doubled your wins, although you had a pretty poor showing in the playoffs this year, a lot of things need to be cleaned up. Uh, I think three years, especially when you make a big leap, but you win twice as many games between year one and two, the third year is definitely a make or break year. And unfortunately for McCarthy, Dan Quinn's going to be gone, which he completely turned that defense around. Uh, I would assume he's going to take over a head coaching position somewhere in the league. So that's a massive hole that McCarthy's going to have to fill. And then there's even rumors that Kellen Moore's going to be gone, that your, your OC who's been doing a pretty good job. So you're probably going to lose your two hot coordinators, uh, and that's not going to look good for McCarthy. He's going to have to bring in some guys that really know what they're doing, and we're really going to see – just how good of a head coach Mike McCarthy is this next coming season. Uh, I don't anticipate the Cowboys to be as good as they were this year. So next year he probably will get fired. But I do think that given the win total doubling between year one and two, he at least deserves a year three. And, that, and that, that's fair enough. I agree with both of you. And, and you both, to go back to what Hefe was saying, you know how I feel about penalties. That's why Jim Caldwell and Norv Turner, these guys are some of the most brilliant minds in, in, in football, but they were horrible head coaches. And it was simply because of the defense. They just had, or I'm sorry, the discipline. They had no control of what was going on and they were filled with penalties. On the flip side, you have guys like Parcells and Belichick and the guys coming out of their tree, Brian Flores, that it's all discipline. They, they established that from the very beginning. So, to Hefe's point, looking ahead, somebody that wants to see see that ahead would see that this this isn't going anywhere, and it kind of and it kind of gets in to your point, Zach. Uh, give the guy a chance because he did turn some things around, but it was pure talent. And um, when when Quinn and Moore go, uh, and you mix out with these penalties, they probably you're probably not probably right. They they won't be as good as this year. My, my my point, when I'm looking at this from my point, not Jerry Jones's point, but from my point, the the Cowboys, anything less than the Cowboys not going to the Super Bowl was a failure with this team. They're so talented. Um, you know, I ragged on them early in the season, but they were explosive. The defense got better. Dan Quinn got the defense shaped up. 
And by all rights, they were easily one of the top four teams that should have been uh, if, if things were going well. And you have to ask with a better coach. It's the whole Tony Dungy thing. Uh, Tony Dungy won. Would the Colts have been better with a different coach? I don't know the answer to that. We'll never know the answer. I don't want to debate. Um, but I'm not sure that McCarthy uh, is going to get this done with this talent. So if, by all rights, he probably will let him come back for that reason, because it's the right thing to do. I will agree with that, too. I mean, the guy, right? I mean, you've got an improved record. You fell short. Okay, I'll give you one more chance. It's, it's kind of the human human thing to do. But on the other hand, I'm afraid that they're squandering talent, where if they brought somebody in, and it's the whole Tony Dungy to Chucky thing, uh, Tony Dungy wasn't getting it done in Tampa, and next thing you know, Chucky came in and pushed him over the edge, kind of Larry Bird to Indiana thing. They were they they were right there on the precipice, and Larry Bird came in, and something about it kind of pushed them over the edge. Show my age. That's back you know before Malice in the Palace, but it's that mentality. The other thing that I want to throw in here, and this is a friend of mine said this to me today, and and I've been thinking about it all day, and I think he's right. There aren't many top quality coaches that will come in and put up a Jerry Jones' shit. And, you know, a guy like Bill Belichick isn't going to go coach for, for, for Jones. I don't even know that Brian Flores would go coach for Jones. You, you, you know what I mean? So it, it takes a special kind of person to come in and just – because they're a puppet. Jerry Jones is making a lot of decisions in that organization – and they haven't been the same, you know, J- Jimmy Johnson put up with it for a couple of years and then he couldn't take any more. He had to go. And that was back, you know, that was 27 years ago. So I don't know, man. It, that's why I think that's why Jason Garrett stayed around so long because he just did. He did absolutely did everything he was told to do. So they got a mess in Dallas and as much crap as we give Dallas fans. I, I really feel sorry for them because this very well could have they every year they say this is the year and we tease them about that. This should have been the year. And um, but it pisses me off. They're blaming the referees because they need they need to go back to Mike McCarthy, back to what Hefe said. This is as the buck stops at the coaching staff. Um, there ain't no doubt about that. So that's my that's my two cents. I also want to I, I want to go back to what I said at the beginning, talking about the Cardinals. Uh, and then we can talk about the Cardinals if you want uh, in the Rams game. We're kind of jumping around all over. But uh, the Cardinals are currently have the longest active title drought of any major league sports team. The Toronto Maple Leafs are in fourth. Their last title was 1967. The Sacramento Kings last title was in 1951. They were the Rochester Royals. The uh, in Major League Baseball in second place is the Cleveland Guardians, uh, formerly known as the Indians. Their last title was 1948. And the Cardinals lead this debacle with um, the longest drought. Their last title was in 1947 as the Chicago Cardinals. Again, I don't know. This was a uh, I, I well. I was going to say the Cardinals were a colossal collapse in the second half of the season, but I can I can reframe that for a second. Maybe we should debate this. Was it a colossal collapse, or did they just peak too early? I don't know if they peaked too early. The biggest thing with the Cardinals was losing DeAndre Hopkins. That is the biggest loss this offense could have taken. We said it when it happened. They proved it over the course of the uh, the end of the regular season. They are not the same offense without DeAndre Hopkins. They got down early in this game against the Rams. Uh, they couldn't run the ball because they had to play catch up the entire time. So James Conner sits here with four carries for 19 yards. Uh, the Cardinals, even without DeAndre Hopkins, if they want to have any chance at winning, James Conner is going to have to step up and run the ball. But like I said, they couldn't because they were trying to play catch up. Uh, and then Kyler Murray's out there running for his life, making boneheaded decisions like Carson Wentz in the end zone, throwing pick six. Uh, so yeah, it's just losing DeAndre Hopkins was a massive blow to this Cardinals offense. And they really showed that throughout the course of the year and into this game with the Rams. Um, so I would anticipate him being back next year will elevate that offense and they may be in contention for the NFC North title again. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a shame to see just how far off the pedestal they came towards the second and the second half of this season. Well, I, I I when we were talking about Mike McCarthy, I mentioned patterns. So if you look at the pattern of what Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury have done together, 
Um, it's been all three seasons they've been together. I think they've lost uh, at least five of their last six. I think one time it was, you know, five of the last seven games. I mean, it's just every season there's a collapse with this team. They start real well, and then and then through the season, um, things don't go right. And obviously, like Zach was saying, losing D-Hop is a big part of that. It changes the, the offense completely, teams don't have to worry about keeping an extra guy over in D-Hop's range. Um, so, he, you know, it, it, things definitely changed with D-Hop not there, but but this is this is becoming a pattern um, again. And, and at some point, the Cardinals are going to have to look inward and say, okay, what's not working? We've brought in all this personnel. We seem to have drafted well, um, but I, I honestly just don't think Cliff Kingsbury is the guy that can push his team over the top. And I think that's been proven uh, down the stretch when games get harder. Um, Clint Click Kingsbury hasn't got it done since he got there. So he's another guy, um, in my opinion, should be on the hot seat after what we just saw uh, down the stretch here for the Cardinals. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets another year um, here with the Cardinals, kind of like Zach was saying, you give give a guy a chance to build something. You know, at least he got to the playoffs this time. But if he doesn't win a playoff game, I think he's out next year. Yeah, and that's a hard decision to make, uh, you know, that – that we're winning, but we're not winning the Super Bowl because we all know what it feels like to hire an inept coach and win five, seven games. Um, and, and and I've seen I've seen owners make that mistake where they're winning, but they're not going to the Super Bowl and they fire the coach and then they pull off eight straight seasons of, you know, under 500. So it's a it's a weird game. That you got to play. I want to just point out, um, Zach, you accidentally said uh, that the NFC North. And we all know that you meant the NFC West. Yeah, West, um, whatever. Yeah, I just I just corrected that for for our listeners. So, okay, so I want to I want to throw a couple things in here. And Hefe, I know you're going to hate this, but we're we're saying uh, we're saying goodbye to Big Ben. Uh, his last game probably in the NFL. Hefe uh, giving you a fist bump here. Um, I, I do want to point out, and, and Roethlisberger has not been without his controversy, but from an from a player standpoint, NFL standpoint, um, Roethlisberger has 18 seasons all with the Steelers, uh, which I read that this is the longest tenure for any quarterback in NFL history to play with just one team. Um, I don't know where that was. There was no citation with it, but you know, unless someone can prove otherwise, I'm going to, I'm going to go with that. Oh, uh, and Wasn't in those Tom 18, Brady with the Patriots for twenty years, but he but he went to the Bucks. This is this is a quarterback staying with only one team, longest tenure with one team, and then not going somewhere else. Oh, okay, I got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's a little ambiguous. Uh, in those eighteen seasons, Ben had zero losing seasons, uh, which is pretty remarkable. I don't know that that's completely Ben's uh, Ben's ability, but certainly he's a contributing factor to that. I think that goes a long way with the culture and, and Mike Tomlinson there, but um, but his season came to a close yesterday. I don't I don't I don't anticipate he'll be back. But you know these guys uh, say they're going to sit out, and then they come around to minicamp and uh, they're wishing they were there, and it's really weird. Or and they they either come back or they sit out a year and come back and go to another team, whatever. So never say never, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess never say never. There's still some sort of chance because he has officially said it was going to be his last season at any point. But after once we got to the Browns game and, and saw how everything was after that game and him doing the walk around the stadium and everything, it sure feels like this was it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that completely. Uh, so I want to I want to throw one a couple more stats in here real quick, um, and then see if there's anything in particular you guys want to talk about. Uh, Patrick Mahomes uh, setting this league on fire. Patrick Mahomes is the f- fourth fastest to 50 wins as a quarterback in NFL history. Uh, he did it in 63 regular season starts. The three above him are Otto Graham, Daryl Lamonica, and Ken Stabler. If you're a football fan, those are pretty significant names not only uh are they pretty significant names that are in front of him but there's a lot of significant names behind him is probably the bigger point to make 
when we could just go down with Aikman and Kelly and Marino and these guys. Um, yeah, so that's pretty remarkable in itself. But uh, to add to that, he is um, the second fastest to 150 touchdown passes in 63 regular, regular season starts, second only to Dan Marino, who did it in 62 games. Uh, so Patrick Mahomes is certainly making a name for himself. I was going to say living up to his contract, but I don't know that I'll ever believe, <laughs> believe he's worth that much money, no matter what he's doing. Uh, but it's pretty significant. I mean, he's 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 a special talent for sure. Um, before we get into these games, anything you guys over the weekend you want to talk about? Yeah, just how how beautiful it was as a Colts fan to not only watch the Steelers and Patriots both lose this weekend, but to see them both get absolutely kicked in the teeth. It was, it was a phenomenal weekend. Yeah. I, um, I couldn't help, but when watching the bills and the Patriots game, uh, which I, I, I'm man enough to admit I was wrong. I was shocked. I was shocked that that was happening. Um, but as it was happening, uh, I, I was like, this is a little bit of karma. This is what happens when you just absolutely pound the shit out of people year after year after year after year, and they get the upper hand. And the Bills, did, the bills just did not let up. I think they, were, they, they let it all back out in, in one game. So, you know, big deal there. Uh, the, all right, so let's go to uh, – we can go ahead and start talking about games. So the Bengals had a big win over the Raiders. The Raiders now fired their general manager. So that's kind of up in the air. And then they'll probably make a coaching decision from there. Not much to talk about there. But the Bengals uh, come in this week and they play the number one seed of Tennessee Titans. Uh, did, is there a final announcement? Is Henry, is Henry back? Is he in the lineup? Henry should be good to go. A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, all the boys are back in town. That's rough, man. That I'm on the Burrow bandwagon. I really want to take the Bengals here, but I think with Tennessee having everybody back, there's a reason they're the number one seed, um, and they're at home. Everybody's rested. The only the only thing the only thing that I think disrupts that is rust. If it, if they're rusty and creaky and they get down early, which could happen, I. Just, I I just got to take the safe pick, man. I think Tennessee walks away with this one. I I don't want to say walks away. It makes it sound like it's easy. I just I don't I don't know that the Bengals will beat Tennessee in Tennessee. Yeah, I think it's going to be another really close game. It's uh out of the four games, I think this will probably be the closest. It's a uh, kind of a toss up. I'm I'm. I struggle because I've hated on the Titans all season long. Uh, I feel like. They weren't as good as the Colts, for example, but they're sitting here at 12 and five, the number one overall seed. Uh, they beat the Colts twice. They beat other really good teams all season long. A lot of them without Derrick Henry for half the season. So it's pretty remarkable what they have accomplished uh, throughout this course of the season. So I have to tip my hat to the Titans. Um, although I don't believe you are necessarily a great football team, so far, you've done everything that every other team in this league has wanted to do. So um, it's hard for me to stand behind that statement at this point. When it comes to this game, I think the Bengals are getting hot. I think they've been hot. I think they're more than capable of winning this game. I think it's going to be a very good game. But, yes, I also have to take the safe pick and go with Derrick Henry and the Tennessee Titans at home over the Bengals in what should be a pretty close game. I think the Titans are favored by three and a half. I think uh, I think it might actually be closer than three and a half, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I would – I would take the the Titans with the points there. I think that this is a game that, that could have been close. I, I thought that the Bengals could actually win this game, but uh, the Bengals had to put uh, Larry Ogunjobi on season-ending IR with Liz Frank's injury. Uh, it's a huge part of the defensive line. Trey Hendrickson uh, got hurt and went out of the last game. Doesn't look like he's going to be ready. At least that's what it sounds like uh, at the current moment. Um, so, you know, hopefully he's out there, but he's definitely – uh, going to be less than 100% and going to be affected by a sprained ankle. So uh, with some pieces missing on that defensive line and you insert Derrick Henry into the Titans lineup, like the, I just feel like the Titans are going to be the more physical team all day long. I think early 
um, when Derrick Henry's trying to knock some of that rust off. Um, maybe the Bengals get up and get an early lead, but I think the Titans are going to, again, be more physical throughout the game, and we're going to see them do what they do to teams, which is just wear them down and wear them down. And and Derrick Henry's probably going to have a big game coming back. A.J. Brown's probably going to have a big game. Uh, I see the Titans winning by two scores in this game. Well, it should be a good game. And I, you know, I'm a Vrabel fan. We've talked about that before. And uh, and and a Tannehill fan, which sucks because the Titans are in, in the Colts division. Uh, but I just told you I've, I'm on the Burroughs bandwagon as well. So uh, this is one of those games where I, I I I wouldn't mind either of these teams winning. And I hope it's as I hope it's as good as a game as I think it's going to be. But overall, we're all three taking the Tennessee Titans here. Do you uh, do you want to ask the other questions that go along with this game that's on the pigskin pick them? Or do we not want to do that? It depends on how bad you want to win. I don't care. I don't care sharing my stuff. I don't buy that. Don't bother me. I, I'm I, confident. I, I don't care. I so the 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 questions that follow up with the the picks here. Uh, who will record more receiving yards in this game, Jamar Chase or AJ Brown? We'll let Hefe answer first since he's winning. Uh, well, I think because yeah, be, because the Titans are are more run centric team. They're getting uh, they're getting Derrick Henry back, and I think they'll be up for a decent portion of this game. Um, I think Jamar Chase is going to have more yards because there's going to be more opportunities when they're passing, trying to come back and win the game. Yeah, I agree with that. I can't really argue too much there. I also picked Jamar Chase. He's their go-to for the Cincinnati Bengals. Like Hefe said, Derrick Henry's probably going to get the ball a lot this game, and they also have Julio Jones they can also dish it out to when the Bengals start overcompensating for Derrick Henry being on the field. So I'm also taking Jamar Chase. I, I agree. A absolutely. I took Jamar Chase for the same reasons. Um, and and the, next, the next one is, will Derrick Henry score a touchdown? Uh, in the infamous <laughs> words of Joe Rush, don't be stupid. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Henry pulls out three of them this game. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a ridiculous question. I got burned on the Josh Allen question. I'm not going to get burned on this one. Um, all right. And then so the the next question, I'll save that till after we talk about the, the next game here. So uh, the next game up is the 49ers at the Green Bay Packers. The 49ers obviously stunning the Dallas Cowboys which we we knew we've talked for two years about what the 49ers are capable of. And they just, for whatever reason, with injuries and some other things, they just keep underachieving. Uh, and But they, they did well enough to get into the playoffs and then proved yesterday or the day before yesterday that they deserve to be here. So, however, they are going into Green Bay and um, there's too much – distance between the Packers and the 49ers. I, I think if the 49ers have a great day and the Packers have an off day and some things go their way, we might have a really close game and maybe they can eke one out. But when push comes to shove all down on paper, I don't see the 49ers having having the ability to beat Green Bay and Green Bay. I'm taking the Packers. Yeah, this is uh I said last week that I wouldn't be surprised if whoever comes out of the 49ers Dallas game makes it to the Super Bowl out of the NFC. I still believe the 49ers can do that. Unfortunately, they're getting paired up with the Green Bay Packers, who are the one team in the NFC that I really don't see anybody being able to be if they are firing on all cylinders. Um, so although the 49ers have won seven out of nine, they've made their way up through the rankings, pushed their way into the playoffs. Now they're in the divisional round. I cannot go against Aaron Rodgers and the and the Green Bay Packers. Uh, they're favored by five and a half. I will probably take the Packers to cover that spread, especially because Jimmy Garoppolo and quite a few other players are on the uh, injury report right now. So uh, keep an eye on Jimmy G. We'll see how he is throughout the course of this week and if he's ready to go uh, come Saturday, I believe. Yeah, and it, I think it was pretty apparent. I, I think it's good to note that Garoppolo is is dealing with another injury. We already knew about the the torn ligament in the thumb or whatever that is. Um, he also is dealing with a, a throw or yeah throwing shoulder injury. 
Um, and and you, it was noticeable in the second half of that game. Jimmy G was missing the mark on a lot of throws. And, and really, I mean, had the Cowboys not shot themselves in the foot, uh, the Cowboys should have won that game. And Jimmy would have been the letdown piece of that. So um, coming into this game, you know, a lot of people are comparing, you know, this week and what's going to happen in this game to, to what happened a couple years ago when the 49ers ran for like 230 yards before contact on the Packers. So um, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think this Packers defense is different from what we've seen the last couple of years. Uh, they're able to get after the quarterback. They have some some pieces coming back uh, on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. You know, this is the one team coming into the playoffs that's getting healthier, um, which is pretty crazy. And, and obviously we know if the 49ers, they had a couple key injuries on their team. So, you know, I, even if the 49ers were healthy, I think I'd still be taking the Packers, but I think the Packers should win this one fairly easily, honestly. All right, not much to add there. Uh, we're all three taking the Packers. Um, and you probably should too. So um, the question that goes along with this game, over under 24.5 completions by Aaron Rodgers for this game. I don't know yet. I don't, I don't know. What do you guys think? So for this one, I'm taking the over um, just because I, I think – they're going to want to make a point, and San Francisco has a pretty good run defense. I think they're going to get into passing situations um, enough times for Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams to ball out in the pass game, so I am taking the over on that. I am also taking the over. I was very hesitant to do this uh, throughout the course of the season. Aaron Rodgers went over that mark only five times, but he got pretty close in almost every single game out there with the exception of like one or two. Uh, so. I was very hesitant to do it, but I do think that they will be airing it out quite a bit against this 49ers secondary, so I will also take the over. Well, you, you do realize after hearing that, I'm, there's no way I'm taking the under. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's possible. They do have Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Yeah. So, this, so the last Saturday, question for the Saturday's games is, which of these players who have the most passing yards this round it's the four quarterbacks going to play on Saturday. Joe Burrow, Jimmy Garoppolo, Aaron Rodgers, and Ryan Tannehill. Uh, I, 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 no disrespect to Tannehill and Garoppolo. I think this question comes down to Burrows and Rodgers only. Um, and I, I have to think it'll be Aaron Rodgers personally, just with the matchups uh, the way they are. So for me, I, I know Aaron Rodgers is a popular pick, but I'm picking Joe Burrow in this one. Because, uh, again, I think they'll be passing more because they're going to be trying to come back in that game. And they have a dynamic passing offense. So I took Joe Burrow. Uh, I had a feeling he was going to do that. I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers just because you know how I feel about Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. But it wouldn't surprise me if Joe Burrow puts up quite a bit of yardage up against the Titans. Uh, yeah, that but, would surprise me. Either. Yeah, but for the sake of making a pick, I'm going with A-Rod. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, and I just think that I think the Bengals and the Titans are a little better matchup. I, I, I just think I think the Packers are going to – never mind. It doesn't matter. I, I, I'm going with Aaron Rodgers. We're all three going with Aaron Rodgers on that on that choice there. No, no I think Joe Burrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. Burrow. Yeah, sorry. Hefe is the obstinate one. Uh, the outlier. That's what I meant to say, not obstinate, outlier. Uh, and the 49ers and Packers, another one. Who will record more receiving plus rushing yards, Debo Samuel or Devontae Adams? Mm. Zach, it's only fair that you go first this time. I actually took Debo Samuel purely for his rushing capabilities, although it wouldn't surprise me if Devontae Adams has 150 yards this game. Yeah, I think in this game I am taking Devontae Adams. Um, I think he'll have over 100 yards. You know, it's the playoffs. It's Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. They'll do what they do against this secondary. And I think that, again, Jimmy G being hurt, um, I think is going to affect the entire passing game. That includes Debo. And the Packers have been okay against the run uh, this year. So I think they'll be able to shut down Debo for the most part in this game. Yeah, I'm going – I'm same. I'm going with Devontae Adams. I just – I think the Packers are going to do pretty much what would you say the Packers do what the Packers do. They do what they do. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So that's right. throwing dimes and dropping suck at signs. <laughs> that's right. Uh, all right. So uh, first Sunday game, uh, the, I think 
I, I think a lot of these games are going to be good games, but I think um, Sunday is going to be really – should be really entertaining. Uh, this Rams at the Buccaneers – this is this is a tough this is tough man this this is a tough pick i think the bills and chiefs in sunday after evening is also a really tough pick uh, and i keep going back and forth on this it's in tampa i don't know i mean it's a long trip i don't know that i mean it'll have an impact but um you know the rams are certainly capable of not only winning this game but uh, but doing a lot of damage in the process and winning big so I don't know. The jury's still out for me. I want to hear what you guys have to say. So these two teams played back in I week three, I believe. And I think the Rams won 34 to 24. To me, this all comes down to Matthew Stafford, which Matt Stafford is going to show up. Is it the Matt Stafford of old from the Detroit Lions? Or is it the Matt Stafford who just won his first playoff game and is ready con- to continue that success? I think Stafford's going to come out balling. I think the Rams will be the defending Super Bowl champions. Uh, I said at the beginning of this year, I think Rams would probably be my favorite going coming to the Super Bowl out of the NFC. So I'm going to stick with that. Uh, I think this team is loaded. Odell Beckham has stepped up into his role very, very nicely and given Matt Stafford another threat. Uh, So I, I personally am going to take the Los Angeles Rams to upset the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this weekend. Yeah, you know, I, I look back at the first matchup to to see how that went. And, and again, like Zach said, uh, the Rams were able to win that. But that was at the beginning of the year. And coming into this, uh, you know, the Rams from that point are the healthier team. And they got Cam Akers back. Cam Akers, by the way, looked great in that Cardinals game. He, you know, him and Sony Michelle were sharing snaps, but Cam Akers looked great. Um, and I think that's a big deal. The other thing in this game, I think, is a big deal is the fact that Tristan Wirfs and Ryan Jensen both got hurt. And I, I believe Ryan Jensen came back in the game um, and, and you know, was serviceable, but but certainly not himself. He's usually very dominant. Tristan Wirfs just did not look right. He's a liability on the field. It's it's yet to be determined whether he's going to play or not. Of course, we're in the playoffs. All these guys are going to try to play. Um, but but with the injuries up front and Von Miller coming on strong over the last, you know, four or five, six weeks here for the Rams and making game-changing plays for them. Obviously, they have Aaron Donald up front, Leonard Floyd. I think they're going to get it, Tom. Brady forced him into a couple uh, uncharacteristic mistakes and Tom um, unfortunately for him doesn't have you know AB or Chris Godwin you know the passing game is going to suffer for that um, in this game so um, I'm also going to be taking the Rams to upset the Buccaneers so I'm curious I think I think I'm I, I'm scrambling trying to look this up while Hefe was talking I think McVeigh has the upper hand in their head-to-head matchups when Arians was uh, in Arizona. Um, and, and I think that may play a factor too. And I'm just, I'm having a hard time picking against the Bucks at home, but I, I've got this gut feeling that the Rams are going to win this game. And that, uh, to be honest, that's probably who I'm going to go with. But I hope, I hope it's as good a game as I think it's going to be. Um, so the next question up for this game is who will record more passing touchdowns between Stafford and Brady? I'm going with Stafford. You, you have the best receiver in the league in Cooper Cup. You have Odell Beckham Jr. who's showing up. Uh, you have Tyler Higbee out there. you got many, many options. Tom Brady, like Hefe said, playing without A.B., who's no longer on the team. Chris Godwin is out. Uh, the passing game is going to suffer because those are two huge playmakers. Pretty much leaves Mike Evans, Rob Gronkowski, and some other guys like Scotty Miller. I know everybody's heard of his name, but that's because of the Bucks' success. So really you only have two superstars, whereas the Rams, they have a lot of credible threats out there on the field. So I am going with Matt Stafford in this. Yeah, I'm also going to go with Matt Stafford um, for a lot of the reasons Zach just stated, you know, the, the lack of weapons that Brady has. And like I mentioned before, I think he's going to be under a lot of pressure in this game. So it's it's not going to be a pretty game for him. And I think Jalen Ramsey, the way the Rams uh, play Jalen Ramsey, you know, he's all over. He doesn't stick on one guy. But I think you're going to see 
um, because he kind of plays that slot position, um, slot position inside linebacker kind of guy. I think you're going to see a lot of Jalen Ramsey on Gronk in this game, which is going to prevent, in my opinion, prevent touchdowns. Um, so I'm going to go with Matt Stafford here to have more touchdown passes. Yeah, I'm going to go with Matt Stafford too. I'll keep that simple. Next question is over under 10 and a half combined receptions by Odell Beckham and Rob Gronkowski. Now, I felt like this was the hardest question on this whole thing. I, I still am not confident with either answer, um, <laughs> but I do think with as much as the Bucks throw the ball um, and as good as that Rams offense can be and what we just saw this last game from the Rams, I'm going ahead and picking the over for this one. I am also taking the over. I think it's going to be very, very close. Uh, I'd, I'd be worried about Gronk's stats here. I think Odell's going to get enough targets and enough receptions to cover his portion of this. Uh, but I'd be worried about Rob getting his. Uh, but because the, the Bucks are going to be so limited, uh, they're going to have to get Gronk the ball. They're going to have to get Mike Evans the ball if they want to have any chance of winning this game. So I think they will get that, but it's going to be very close. So I'm taking the over. So you guys think this is going to just be a shootout? Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the Rams get up early and the Bucks are going to have to play catch up. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it looked like what we just saw uh, from the Cardinals. You know, obviously, you know Tom's better than Kyler, so it'll be a little better. Um, that team's better than the Cardinals, but I do think the Rams um, are kind of dominant in this game. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about the Sunday night game and then come back to the the, the weekend question. Uh, the, the Bills at the Chiefs. Uh, so I, I know, I know that I kept talking about don't get bet against Belichick and 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 Mac Jones is impressive. Uh, I I was impressed with Mac Jones all year. Pepe, I know you've countered that a little bit, and but I think what we saw this weekend were two things. One that. New England is not as good as I thought, as I claimed that they were. But two, the Bills look ready to win a Super Bowl. And so I think that, you know, and, and you, you sent a couple texts and, you know, the, uh, the Patriots are, are trash. And, 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 I, and I, think, I think that's funny. And I, and I, know, I know emotionally how you feel. But I don't necessarily believe that. I believe the Patriots were good enough to be in the playoffs. I think the Bills just proved they're ready to win a Super Bowl. Now, whether they will or not, I'm not making a prediction. But this Sunday night game, th this could be one of the best games we've seen in a long time. This could be a really, really, really good game. And I think Buffalo is quite capable of winning this game. To, to be, if they play like they did this weekend, God help the Kansas City Chiefs. And with that said, I need to acknowledge that I think the Kansas City Chiefs, I said it last week, they're a championship team. They've done a good job of, of tweaking some things and tightening some things down. Uh, are they as good as they have been in the past? Probably not. They're certainly capable of winning this game. They're capable. They're certainly capable of finding them their way back to the Super Bowl. I keep thinking to go with the safe pick with the Chiefs because they're in Arrowhead. <clears throat> but something about this tells me the Bills are going to come ready to play. And um, it, it's almost split on ESPN. 51% are picking the Bills. 49% are picking the Chiefs. That could change by tomorrow and be the, the other way around. Uh, I think I'm going to take the Bills on this one. I'm also going to go with the Bills here. These two teams played way back uh, week five, I believe it was. I think the Bills won by 18 maybe. Uh, I could be mistaken. 20, that's right. 38-20. Uh, but that was when the Chiefs had the worst defense in the league. They have since turned around and have one of the best defenses in the league. Both of these teams flying high. They're both scorching hot at this time. So this game is going to be unbelievable to watch. Uh, it can go down to the wire. I believe it will go down to the wire. But ultimately, like I said earlier in the season, at the very beginning of the season, I think this is the year the Bills make it to the Super Bowl, and it all starts by going in and beating the back-to-back -back AFC champion Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to go into Arrowhead. They're going to come out with a W, uh, and they're going to be on their way to the Super Bowl 
after they win the AFC Championship the next week. Uh, the Chiefs are favored by two at home. That's a telling sign that people are putting their money on the Bills, in my opinion. Uh, so, like I said, either way, this is going to be a great game to watch, but I think the Bills are going to get it done. Yeah, you know, this is going to be the third time and I believe it's 362 days that the Bills are in KC, uh, dating back to the AFC Conference Championship uh, last season. And obviously, you know, the Chiefs win that game 38-24, but as Zach mentioned, the Bills earlier this season uh, went into Arrowhead and won 38-20. And, and I think the Bills have everything it takes to come in here and do it again. Um, I, their defense – uh, has looked phenomenal. Uh, they any problems that they had there for a few weeks seemed to you know pretty much after that Patriots game where they got ran all over. Um, after that, the Bills turned a corner. You know they got they took that smack in the mouth. They learned from it. and They've grown from it. And I think <clears throat> I think they have a chance to come in and, and probably not. They're not going to dominate this Chiefs team the way they were able to dominate the Patriots. Um, but. I do think that the Bills are able to come in and get a W. Um, you know, I think the Chiefs are going to put up a fight. I think this is going to be a close game. Um, but I think that it's the Bills' time. And I think the Bills are going to come in and get revenge for what happened in the playoffs last year. That game meant a lot. You know, there was that picture after the game, Stephon Diggs uh, standing on the field watching the Chiefs celebrate. You know, this, this means a lot for Buffalo. I expect them to show up and show up in a big way. So I will be taking Buffalo to win this game. Well, That's what I, I like know, to hear. Yeah. I know there are a lot of people in Buffalo that are – Really happy to hear that. Really excited. Um, it's been a long time. I was it ninety three or ninety four was their last Super Bowl appearance. The uh, the infamous zero and four run that they had, and uh, I, I and I know we've talked about that too. That I hated the Bills when that happened. I I, I laughed and was so excited, rooted against them in all four Super Bowls. And now that I've gotten older and gotten away from it, the just the feat of making it to four Super Bowls in a, in a row. Um, they deserve to win one of those. And uh, truth be told, uh, I may end up rooting for the Bills to to make the run and win this whole thing before it's over. Uh, but nonetheless, we're all three taking the Bills at Kansas City. And I, I God, I, I, we, I, 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 this is like the fourth time I've said it already in this show. We we have some really good games this weekend. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy how how crazy the season was all year and so unpredictable and that we're having such a phenomenal postseason right now. Uh, and, and we're looking at the brackets. It's only, it's only going to get better from here and it should be, uh, hopefully we're going to have a really competitive Super Bowl. There, it doesn't look like there's going to be any lopsided victories uh, coming up. So uh, all right, next question up with this game with the bills and the chiefs, who will record more passing yards, Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes? Uh, that's actually a really tough one, in my opinion. I think it's going to be pretty close between the two, uh, but because of Josh Allen's rushing ability and because I think that the Bills need to establish a rushing attack against the Chiefs' defense, uh, I'm going to go with Mahomes because he's more of the gunslinger. Uh, and he, he likes to get it out to Hill and Kelsey and all that. Um, so I'm going to take Mahomes. I think it's going to be close. I think overall between passing and rushing yards and just overall stats, I think Josh Allen will have a better game. But in this one in particular, who has more passing yards, I'm going to go with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a good argument, right? And it's, it's tough to go against either. This is, again, one of the harder questions. Uh, that are on here, but I'm going to go with Josh Allen. And the reason is, is because of obviously his talent and, and what he has around him. I think that Bill's offense has proved that any given week against any opponent, he, they can pretty much do whatever they want. Um, so I think he'll, he'll have a good game and probably have, you know, about 275 passing yards. And I think the Bill's defense is going to be able to shut down that passing game for the most part. They're, they're not going to give up big explosive plays to Tyree Kill or Travis Kelsey or Byron Pringle or any of these guys. They're going to keep everything in front of them and be fundamentally sound. You can depend on that from this Bill's defense. So I think Patrick Mahomes is still going to get his yards. He'll have over 200, um, but I do think Josh Allen has more. All right. If you have to ask, there's no, there's no emotions in that decision. FA's a big Josh Allen fan. Yeah, just, big I'm Josh just Allen. Sure. 
Yeah, yeah, and and honestly, if he hadn't played so well against Bill Check's defense, I think that's what gets it for me. Is that, I mean, Fair seven enough. possessions, seven touchdowns. I mean, perfect game from the Bills, and that offense was executing perfectly. And I expect them to keep doing so. Yeah. Speaking of which, that reminds me, the Bills are the first team in playoff history to not punt, throw an interception, or kick a field goal. Uh, seven for seven on their touchdowns. Unfortunately, they missed two extra points, but they didn't even come close to needing those. Uh, pretty remarkable there. Uh, all right, so the next question is Chiefs over under, uh, Bills and Chiefs over under five and a half combined passing touchdowns by Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. I got them both throwing three each, so over. Yeah, that's how I feel. Even if it's three, three, or four, two, it feels pretty obvious this one's going over. I, I think so too. I, I think it'll be another shootout. We see a lot of a lot of aerial football on Sunday for sure. Uh, and the last question uh, for this game: Will Travis Kelsey score a touchdown? Yes. Yes. He's a very integral part of that offense. Uh, they need Kelsey to do well. They need Tyreek Hill to do well in order to have any chance of winning this game. I think he will definitely hit the end zone at least once. I picked no for this one. Oh! Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and, I, and I think Travis Kelsey has, I believe it's six games in a row now in the playoffs with over 100 yards. Um, but in this one, you know, when we talk about, you know, the Bills defense being fundamentally sound, I think they're going to take away Kelsey when they get near the end zone. So you'll probably see Patrick Mahomes throw a touchdown to Byron Pringle or Demarcus Robinson as opposed to Travis Kelsey because he'll be locked up by that Bills defense. Okay. It's a bold all right. strategy, Cotton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So the uh, the last question on this ESPN pick em. Which of the play- these players will record the most receiving yards this round? Stefan Diggs, Mike Evans, Cooper Cup, or Tyreek Hill? It seems obvious to me, that, but I, I want to see what you guys say. Well, every single one of these guys is more than capable of winning this category right here. Uh, but you have to take the safe pick. You have to go with Cooper Cup. He's been the most consistent. He's been balling out all season long. He's been putting up the yardage. Uh, and I think Stafford is going to be clicking with him all game long. So I'm taking Cooper Cup here. Um, you know, for me, I feel like Todd Bowles is smart enough to do whatever the 49ers were doing in coverage to make sure Cooper Cup isn't what beat you in the game. Um, now, obviously, for the Cardinals, um, that didn't really matter because they got beat everywhere else. Um, but I am not taking Cooper Cup in this one. I'm actually going to take Stefan Diggs. Uh, for the reason I mentioned earlier, this one means more. And the image we all know from last season was Stefan Diggs. This one means more, I think. Uh, there's going to be a point to prove with Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen in this game. Um, I think they're going to make a plan to have a really big game between those two. So I'm going ahead and taking Stefan Diggs in this one. Okay. All right. I- I'm also taking Cooper Cup. I think he's. He's the primary target. Uh, uh, Those other guys are on teams with so many weapons. Uh, I guess Diggs, you can say the same thing, but I'm just going with Cooper Cup. Uh, Okay. Anything else you guys want to say about anything before we run out of here? No, it's going to be another great weekend of playoff football, that's for sure. And Hey, what are are your guys' – Point total predictions in the yeah. tiebreaker. For I, this didn't, I didn't. No, no. I didn't no. ask that half a because that's a tiebreaker. That I, no, I that. Oh, we're gonna leave leave that one private. I think that's a sacred question. I I would hate for you know because you had a formula that worked for you last week. Had you given that formula up and everybody else copied it, you might not have won the tiebreaker. Yeah. Sure. True. True. Okay. Oh. I can ride with it. Uh, we can't. We can't give everything away. So. Um, <laughs> All right. Anything else you guys want to add before we go? Nope. Think that'll do it, man. Cool. All right. That does it for this week. I want to remind you to show us some love, like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends, and uh, you know, catch us on WUVI radio on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern. And uh, you can find more information at WUBI.live. And um, of course, we will see you back here next week where we will uh, break down the divisional rounds and look ahead to the AFC and NFC championships. Until then, join the games, and we'll catch you later. Deuces.